Huh. I, something tells me. I don't know. I, I, I don't even have a person. Wait. Is the guitar case big enough to fit a person? <laughs> wouldn't that be funny? Actually, that would be hilarious. They wouldn't do that, would they? They wouldn't do that. Put a person in there. Who would be in there anyways? Andrews wasn't in there. None of these people would have been in there. That doesn't make any sense. That would be funny if there was a person in there, though. What the fuck do I present right now? I don't know. I'm trying to think, like, what would be in there. I got, like, would the button be in there? The button wouldn't make any sense because it came off of Korea's costume, so no. Would anything in the suicide reports has nothing to do with it? The autopsy report? I don't think that has anything to do with it. Strangled with a scarf and stabbed with a knife? The, the knife, I feel like the knife doesn't have anything to do with what was in the case. I don't think the knife was in the case. The knife was in 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 guard's room, so it wouldn't have been in the case till if, unless it was after the fact. So no, Lotta's photo. That doesn't. The photo doesn't really tell us what's in the case. The, the case isn't in there. The badge. The magatama. The nickel samurai. What? The photo wouldn't be in there. What else would this be good for? I don't know. No way is that gonna matter. The radio transceiver, no. The camera's an idea, too. No one cares about the article, either. So I'm pretty much at a dead end here. The guitar case certainly wasn't in the guitar case. Neither was the juice. So I'm kind of coming around in a circle here. And I'm coming down to the only things I have to present that are reasonable are the knife, the camera... What? I, is there any reason to present this? Okay, wait. Let me think for a second. Okay, so... Lotta's photo shows a person who's too short to be wearing the costume wearing it. Maybe that's her wearing the costume. I, I mean, I was presuming that already, and I forgot to come back to look at this photo a little clearly. But if, okay, if we assume that she's wearing the costume, then maybe the costume she put into the guitar case. So, can I present the picture, or could I present the... I think this is going to represent the costume. Th that's what this one does. Let's try it. Take that. Th this is this is a pho photograph. Yeah, it is. Yes, but what is important is what is in that picture, Your Honor. Somehow I'm getting lucky today, guys. I'm not even kidding right now. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I, I literally just used my powers of deduction there and just used what was left. The knife didn't make any sense, and neither did the camera. So that was the only other thing I had. I'm glad I thought of the costume thing. In this picture... It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I am proposing is... Inside the guitar case was the Nickel Samurai, the hero's very own costume. What? What? That'd be weird, though. M Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Wright, are you saying that the witness opened the guitar case to take out a costume? What insane point would there be to doing something like that? That insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Ms. Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. Wait. Was the picture that Lotta took from... Un She's leaving Karita's room to go back to Ungar's room, correct? That's, that's why that makes sense now. The costume was already in the case. She took it out to come back out looking like a guard. Now I get it. Okay, sorry. I was thinking of it the other way around. I was a little confused on why the suit would be put in the case, but now that makes sense. So that actually, that makes a lot of sense. So, haha. -ha. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Miss Andrews? We got her sweating now. I refuse to accept your theory. Do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop. And in the end, she managed to get his shot. This shot, correct? You... You mean this photo? Yeah. And it happened after the murder, remember? Or at least, I think... Well, I mean, the point is it happened... She was leaving that room, going to the other room. Order, order! It looks like we've wandered into quite another mess again, haven't we? Nice job, Phoenix. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. <laughs> hmm. So the real murderer is hiding inside of a costume. Wait a second, Your Honor. The Nickel Samurai's costume would have been Matt and Guard's. Why would something of a defendant's be in the victim's room? And inside the guitar case, of all places. Hmm, true. This, that is a little baffling. 
Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. What was this nickel samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? Uh, spare or stolen? Uh... Was it stolen or was it a spare? It can be stolen if he was wearing it. Let's go with spare. Mr. Ngart did not take his costume off during the break period. Yeah, he was sleeping in it if you saw the picture, right? In that case, the costume we are talking about was a spare one. Oh? What? Then, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two nickel samurai costumes at the Gatewater Hotel? Precisely, Your Honor. That is exactly what I'm saying. And how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? That I don't think we have an answer for. It would mean that the victim himself had planned to bring this spare to the ceremony. That's true. But maybe his plan was to kill on guard. Maybe. But, but why? The victim, Mr. Karita, was the jammin' ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai's spare costume with him? What could be the reason behind such a peculiar act? Hmm. Ah, so that's what he intended. What? Objection! What, what are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? Huh? N no, I was just... Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had the Nickel Samurai spare costume? Phoenix, are you sure you can explain this one? Think carefully before you answer. And then answer with gusto. I believe in you. Alright. This is what I think. The reason the victim brought the Nickel Samurai spare costume to the hotel. Holy shit. Why did he bring it? Uh... Why would he bring it? Why would he bring it? Because of... I don't know. Why would he bring it? Huh. This this has an interesting description on it, if you remember. Seems like the Nickel Samurai has to confess something after the post-ceremony show. Yeah, like I said, maybe he wanted to dress up as the... Oh, shit! It just hit me. Remember on guard? No, we kept saying that he doesn't remember that there was supposed to be a press conference or whatever after the show. He's like, what are you talking about? There was no press conference. Remember that? I remember that. Oh my god, I'm glad I remember that. Because that means that the the rubber ninja guy was going to do it. Jammin ninja, whatever. The jammin ninja guy was going to dress up like the nickel samurai and confess something at the ceremony. Dude! This has got to be it. Oh my god, I'm so excited right now if I got this right. What is this? On the night of the murder after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at this conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up, right? But what struck me as strange was that Mr. Engard himself said that he had no idea he was supposed to hold a press conference that night. I'm so glad I remembered that he said that. If I did not remember that, I would have been going around in circles forever. Wow, that didn't take me that long to remember either. Thank God. Just reading about the conference made me remember. Because I was like, why would he want to dress up as Snickel Samurai? Now it makes sense. But how can that be? The way I see it, that can mean one only one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Carita himself. The, the victim? Yes. The spare nickel samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Mr. Carita was going to hold the press conference as the nickel samurai. Aw oh, yeah, that makes sense now. It's all coming together, baby. He was going to dress up as the nickel samurai and hold a conference. But why would the victim do such a thing? That's something I don't quite know yet. However, what I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at that conference. Yeah, what was he going to do? Like, pretend he was the Nickel Samurai and say he's retiring or something? I don't, I don't know. The Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. And by confess, I'd wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Juan Carita, posing as the Nickel Samurai, was going to speak out, uh, speak about Matt and Gar. 
Yes, I guess that is what it would mean. Yeah, duh. But if that's the case, that's not a confession. That's public disclosure. Okay. Miss Andrews? I can see why you are pros at what you do. Pardon me? Yes. Just as you say, the press conference was set up by Juan. Oh, damn. Well, there's a confirmation for you right there. Ms. Andrews, please offer us an explanation for this. I was the one he asked to help set it up. Whoa, really? And the person who prepared the second costume for him? That was also me. Okay. You? Juan had bet everything on the Jammin' Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure that Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. What? He was going to ruin him, huh? It looked somehow... It looked like somehow Juan had his had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. What? What did Matt do? If he didn't kill Juan, what the fuck did he do otherwise? And do you know what the secret of Mr. and God's is, Ms. Andrews? That's something only Juan knew. I... I don't know what it is. Ah, I see. Hmm. I... I've probably been coming off quite suspicious to everyone, but that's to be expected. I've been trying to protect Matt, after all. Protect Mr. On Guard? And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. Ms. Andrews, if you could, please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor, I understand. Okay. She still hasn't really dis explained why she was wearing the costume when she left the room or anything like that. But let's just continue on and see. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill Juan no matter what, and he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course, the button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. Bullshit. I call 1,000% bullshit. Hmm, this does account for everything. Well, I am the logical type. We're finally seeing her true self. She is more nervous than a scared rabbit. If there are no objections, I feel that I can pass a verdict based on this testimony. Now then, Mr. Wright, if you please. Looks like somehow everything has swung to the opposite end of the scale again. That just means I have to put my weight into this and turn her logic upside down. Here we go. Here we motherfucking go. Let's press this bitch. All right, why did you think it was Matt? Tell me why. Would you say that was your intuition speaking to you? Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. Ah, what are you saying? If you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things? A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. And if you think these three things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should already have known that, Phoenix. They didn't teach it to us in school. At least not from what I remember. Yeah, continue now. Yeah, continue on with your sassy self. Hi. So, would you say this need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Juan chose the event, that event, and that hotel for the conference? Because that was when he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved Matt on guard. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. But I'm sure Mr. Engard himself didn't know anything about a press conference. See, the thing about what she's saying right now is that she's saying she's protecting Matt, but now she's burying Matt. So, what the fuck? You're, you're such a two-faced bitch. Which, which is true, man. First you lie, then you tell us, then you lie. It's all lies. Tell me the truth, bitch. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? Uh, anyway, the important thing here is that uh, this information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree, Ms. Andrews. Please correct your testimony, if you please. Grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? Damn, this BZ is fucking new. Her new fucking bootsy. Alright, anyway, she has no way to prove that she's right. Let's press it anyways. Has Mr. Engar done something to hurt or betray you personally? Why do you ask? 
you were the one who helped Mr. Krita with his press conference. And that event was supposed to bring down Mr. Engard, yet you still helped out. Yeah, see, very contradictory. Objection! The person on trial right now is, is Mr. Engard, right? What the witness was thinking, helping the victim with his plan, is none of your concern, or our concern. In any case, this means that the defendant had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? True. But, I mean, Ezra does have a point. Although I would like to know more, damn it. But, didn't you already testify earlier that Matt and Guard was taking a nap in his room? Are you telling me now that that too was a lie so you could cover up for Mr. Engard? I'm not telling you anything of the sort. When I went to get him for the show, he honestly was sleeping. However, as to whether he was sleeping the entire time, that I cannot say. I was too busy setting up the stage at the time. I keep trying, but I cannot find no flaws with, Miss and with what Miss Andrews has said. I can't say the same for some people here in this courtroom, however. Bitch, please. The judge is glaring straight at Mia. Damn. He's glaring at you, smart guy. <laughs> Phoenix is like, oh, he's looking at Mia. What the hell, Mia? <laughs> anyway. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well very well be a clever camouflage. Then what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and the murderer fought. And during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the Jammin' Ninja's costume. You're talking about this button, correct? That button was found in the pleats of Matsukama, isn't that correct? I would think that that think that makes it very decisive evidence. Uh Looks like you are outfoxed again, Mr. Wright. Anyways, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. Bitch, please. Thank goodness Mia can still look at me. <laughs> With an icy stare, yes. Ms. Andrews, for rights, Mr. Wright's sake, please add this information to your testimony. So now it says that button was torn off. Mr. Juan during his fight with Matt. Alright, let's press that thing. And how do you know that? When the ends of the thread on the button and the costume were matched up, they were found to fit together perfectly. Or so I heard. Hmm, I've heard that before too. But why would Ms. Andrews know about this case down to such a fine detail? Because Edgeworth prepped her before this, bro. Don't look at me like that just because I'm prepared and you are not. Ugh, and I thought I had her this time for sure. If there's anything to trip her up on, it has to be here. But where and what? But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt to protect him. LIES! But what you really did was stab the guy in the back, didn't you? And at the worst possible time. Yeah, that's right. No denying that. Who's to say she really stabbed the guy in the back, as you put it? This witness could have disclosed things about Master and Guard any time. Why, then, would she wait until there was a large audience before doing so? It's the same reason why Mr. Kareedov planned such an elaborate con conference. Ms. Andrews wanted to cause Mr. Engard as much damage as she possibly could. This witness bears ill will towards the defendant. Objection! This isn't the Phoenix Wright wax philosophical power, philosophical power hour. And please stop slandering the witness. As I expected, Ms. Andrews' testimony seems pretty solid. Really? Because to me it sounded a little wishy-washy. Wishy-washy? Well, I guess we'll see if I press a little more. You should know this by now, but you'll need strong, decisive evidence to make her talk. Got it, Chief. I'm, gonna pin you, I'm going to pin you down this time, Ms. Andrews. Sorry, I was reading around. I thought he was going to pin down Mia because he really wanted to take her to town, if you know what I'm saying. Too bad she's in the body of a little girl, which is a little creepy and not even right to say. Anyways, what the fuck am I gonna... Hmm. I know what this mode was. I feel like the thing that we, we uh, this one, we're torn off one during his fight with Matt. I feel like there's something here, but what? Does it have to do with the button? Let's read the button. Was ripped from his costume, is covered in Mr. Karita's blood, was found in the Hakama. That doesn't really tell me anything. I just pretty much repeat what she said. What about... How do we how do we know it was ripped during the fight? How does she know that? Strangled with a scarf. Stabbed with a knife. Wait. 
he was strangled with a scarf. How the fuck did they rip off a button? Maybe this is it. Should I save it? I'm saving it. I don't think this is one of those dead end moments where I'm gonna fuck everything up. So let's save it now. And go for it. I'm gonna go for the. I'm going for the autopsy. The autopsy has the only thing about the actual struggle. Nothing else talks about the struggle. So let's do it. Objection! Hell yeah, dude! I am on a roll today. This is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. S strangulation? The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. And what does that mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it. Oh, and it's bleeding. So if it was ripped off during the struggle, that makes no sense. Because... He was being choked, and that's not bleeding. That's choking. You don't bleed when you choke to death, at least unless you're not already bleeding already. But the point is, there shouldn't be blood on the button, or at least it wasn't ripped off during the fight, is what I'm trying to say. Which would mean that it was ripped off the costume when? After the knife was stabbed into the victim. Uh-huh. Exactly. Which means... It is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight. Yeah, son. Yeah, son. That's right, Ms. Andrews. There is no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off the victim's already dead body. Oh snap. We got her now, bitch. We got her now. Order, order. What is the meaning? Oh, God. What is the meaning of this right? So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We now know this button was not torn off during the fight, so the murderer took the time and effort to purposely rip off this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Dun dun dun. Mr. Wright, does this mean? Does this mean you know what the murderer wanted to do with that button? What was it? To pin the crime on guard? Of course. Yeah, they wanted a memento. Totally. Destroy evidence. No, they wanted to pin it on guard. It's pretty obvious there. There is only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. Unguard. Aw, yeah. There's no way anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. That's right. Mr. Unguard was set up. By the real killer, of course. But are we moving away from the fact that Adrian might have been the real killer? Or do you think she... St I still might think... I still have a feeling she did it. But I don't know, man. I'm, I'm still a little skeptical on this whole thing. And the re real murder is? Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is the real killer then? That's a good question. Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet. Not until the very end real killer, the person who planned to what does that say? The two planned to frame Mr. and Guard is I mean, we thought it was Adrian this whole time why would we change our mind now? I, I don't have any other roads, there's no other person I possibly could be thinking it is that besides her so let's just go for it Take that. yeah Ms. Adrian Andrews I choose you, you and Mr. Korea's killer, you are Mr. Korea's killer what? Yeah, that's right, bitch. What'd you expect, huh? What'd you expect? Order, 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 Mr. Wright! This is a very grave matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Ms. Andrews, bitch! What? How preposterous! You can't stick any of that on me! I can't, can I? I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Don't test me, bro! Then, then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. and Guard, naturally. A knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could be only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you! Oh! Yeah, it's getting obvious now, Beezy. Then, what? What about the button that was found in Matt's Hakaba? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the person who found his body, 
or the killer. However, if Mr. Engard was the real killer, there's no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his own Hakama. Damn, bitch. You're just getting fucking owned right now. What do you get to say for yourself? The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Engard's Hakama is the person who went to wake him up from his nap, which is you, yet again, Ms. Andrews. Uh, I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Ms. Andrews, because she knew it was in there, so she put it on after the thing. That costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was such a... There was just such a costume inside the guitar case. He could only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. Dun dun dun! He's the one that put, she's the one that planned all this. And that person is you, Ms. Adrian Andrews. No, I Oh, it's it's getting close now, Beezy. But Ms. Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case. And it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. That's right. That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. Yeah, and the story about the juice is bullshit. But the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Ms. Andrews purposefully left her fingerprints on the glass to show that, yes, indeed, she was the classic day's discoverer of a dead body. Yeah, I was say, all her story has been bullshit, basically. Ah! And, on top, and to top it all off, there's this photo which shows her leaving the room. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on Earth can believe this nickel samurai is Mr. Engard. He would be s much too short for his own costume if it was him. Oh, damn, every piece of evidence. Speaking of how tall people are, Ms. Andrews, you're also kind of short in that stature. Stature, are you not? P please stop. 